Hey friends, welcome again to another session on polynomials and uh, eh, like we did linear polynomials in the last class, we are carrying forward and in this session we are going to discuss quadratic polynomials and how to draw graphs for them, okay. So let us start with, you know, the definition of the polynomial as we have been doing so far. So polynomials are defined or, you know, expressed as, you know, P of x is a n x n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 x to the power n minus 2 and so on and so forth. And finally, a1 x plus a0. And you know that a1, a2, a3, a0 all are real numbers and n is a non negative integer. Okay. Now, if n is equal to 2, then we know that the polynomial is called a quadratic polynomial. So, if you see the degree here is 2. So, this is a quadratic polynomial where a, b, c are real numbers and a cannot be 0. Why? Because if a becomes 0, then the polynomial in this particular polynomial will be reduced to a linear polynomial, right? So, let us understand with a few examples. So, px is y equals x square minus 3x plus 2. This is an example of a quadratic polynomial where degree of px as I have mentioned is 2 and a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 3 and c equals to 2. Mind you guys, many students make this mistake while you know uh, figuring out what is the value of b here. b is minus 3 so the sign is always included. Okay, So this is an example of quadratic polynomial. Now like we uh, drew the graph of linear polynomial in the last session. This session also we are going to draw the graph of quadratic polynomial. So hence we have taken an example x square minus 3x plus 2 and as described in this table we have taken some values of x and corresponding values of y that is corresponding values of px. Isn't it? So 0, 2 minus 1 will give you 6, minus 2, x equals to minus 2 will give you 12, and so on and so forth. Now let us try and plot these points. So 0, 2 is nothing but this point. If you see, this is my 0, 2, minus 1, 6. So this is minus 1, and minus 1, 6 would be this point, isn't it? Minus 1, 6. Now minus 2, 12 will be. You know, let's ignore that value because in the scale we are not we will not be able to fit in 12 over here. And let us know now go further. Let us say 1, 0. This point I'm going to plot 1, 0. So clearly this point is here. Similarly, 2, 0 is here, and 3, 2, 3, 2 is somewhere here. Isn't it? Now in in no way we see that this is going to be a straight line. So drawing this curve using freehand let us say you are drawing like that okay so this will be this will be the the shape of the curve isn't it so if you see from negative infinity of x so this this side is negative infinity isn't it so as you are going from high or uh, negative values of x y sorry negative values of x towards positive value of x if you see the value of y continuously decreases isn't it it is decreasing decreasing and as x is approaching 0 it has decreased to this value which is 2 here and then further down as you keep on increasing x the value of y keeps on decreasing then it becomes 0 at one point at x equals to 1 and hence we said this point is called 0 of px, 0 of px, isn't it? And then as you moved away from this 0, if you notice, the y value hits a minimum, isn't it? It is not going beyond a point and then starts increasing, increasing, again hits a 0. So this is another 0 of the polynomial of 0 of px. So we have so far seen two zeros and then then y values keep on increasing x x as x increases y value keeps on increasing isn't it and then at let us say as x tends to positive infinity here y value also tends to positive infinity isn't it so this is what a quadratic curve or quadratic polynomial looks like 
now there are a few things here so uh, the lowest point in this case here this point is called the vertex of this curve vertex of this curve okay now technically this curve shape is called parabola okay so you will learn in conic section and most of you would be knowing this is a parabola this is the same curve which is traced by a projectile when it is in flight and let us say a shell when uh, fired from a cannon or a cricketing ball when it is hit by a bat or a football when it is kicked by a footballer all these are example of parabola okay and hence the curve traced will be nothing but a quadratic polynomial now you must be wondering that uh, you know how come this kind of a curve is a you know uh, whatever examples we took and in that case actually it is in all those cases which we just discussed the curve looks like this isn't it so if you see this is exactly a mirror image of such kind of a curve or a, if you flip it then you will get a, a trajectory which we just discussed in those examples so now it's turn to see uh, and evaluate using the geogebra tool and maybe we'll be able to get some more insights there so let's switch on to our geogebra tool so here is uh, our geogebra and let us now try to try to get a quadratic equation so let, i'm typing y is equal to x squared can you see the moment i typed x square you can see we have got the nature of curve which we wanted anyways but let me make it more general so i'm writing y is equal to a uh, x squared x squared so it is x squared plus b b x and then plus plus c that is what we discussed as a so this is this is the quadratic curve which we are talking about so here if you see a x square plus b x plus c all a b and c values are one and hence it looks like this particular curve now you must be wondering that it doesn't match with whatever example we had taken so let us match this so let us say in that example b was 3 isn't it yeah so b is 3 and c was i believe 2 yep yeah so if you see in fact no b was minus 3 b was minus 3 so let me take it to minus 3 yeah so b was minus 2 and if you see exactly same curve which we had drawn in our notes right so hence let me find out these points so this is the this is these are the points where the curve is intersecting the x-axis and as you know these points are called this point is called what zero zero right zero number one and this is the second zero of the polynomial so it is cutting the x-axis in two places and now if you see this is uh, opening upwards and it looks very symmetrical isn't it so other thing is it's very symmetric very symmetric isn't it and you can you can see that there can be a line here if you see this line is there this line this line is the axis of symmetry isn't it this line is axis of symmetry and my dear friends this point here is called c this c is called the vertex this c is nothing but this c is nothing but the vertex actually it's not sitting over there so maybe i'll have to yeah this point here is so let me draw this point let this point let this point be c yeah this point d now is so let me just delete e and c yeah so if you see this point d is the is the vertex of the parabola what is this point d d is the d is the vertex of the parabola and if you see 1.5 x value of d is if you see here x value of d x value of d is 1.5 here and uh, y value is negative 0.24 okay now uh, actually if you see 1.5 is nothing but the arithmetic mean of 1 and 2 which are the zeros of zeros of uh, the this this polynomial let us say this value was alpha and this value was beta x equals to alpha and beta so this point here is nothing but x is equal to alpha plus beta by 2 isn't it so this point is x 
So hence uh, x equals to alpha plus beta by 2 and if you see the minimum possible value exists at that value of x only. So this value is the minimum possible value of this polynomial, given polynomial, isn't it? Now this is one observation and let us now try to play with the three coefficient and see what exactly and how exactly it impacts it impacts our curve yeah so now I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the value of a and b and c and see what happens to the curve so as i increase the a value you can see now a value is being increased so as the a value is being increased the curve is widening up widening up widening up and actually it it flips if you see yeah this will give you a better view so this is this is what happens now a is increasing so as a increases oh wow so hence what happens is the curve just changes the direction so whenever a is positive it is it is you can now see when a is positive it is facing upwards isn't it opening upwards as i am reducing a reducing a it is spreading isn't it spreading and at zero it becomes a straight line has to be why because now coefficient of x square is zero so it has become a straight line and as i change it to negative value the curve now is opening downwards this is a new new observation isn't it so hence what do we see as you decrease the value of a so for a to be less than zero it is opening downwards as a is increased towards positive value the curve opens upwards this is one observation right and 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 what now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the value of v and let's say what happens when v changes so as v uh, the value of b changes the curve just swings just swings and uh, you know uh, if you notice the vertex the vertex is tracing another curve itself isn't it isn't it so this is what happens if b value increases and decreases right now what happens when c value increases and decreases so if you see right now in this particular case the curve polynomial is not cutting x axis at all so hence there are no zeros right since the it uh, the value of the polynomial is always above zero so if you notice here the value of all the y's are always above zero so hence there is no possibility of this being zero so there exists no zeros but i can have i can have a condition where there is exactly one zero so if i change this value of c so if you notice value changing the value of c shifts the curve shifts the curve up and down now you see the curve is now just touching the x-axis just touching the x-axis there's only so it is cutting the x-axis exactly at one point so that is the case where we have only one zero of th for this curve and as i reduce this curve uh, value of c now you can see there are two distinct different zeros right exactly two points the curve is cutting the x-axis so hence my friends we have three cases here one when the curve is cutting the x-axis in two points and there is one point where and there is a case when it, it cuts the x-axis exactly at one point exactly at one point like this like this and then we have condition where the curve doesn't cut the x-axis at all so this is an observation so hence we can say that the quadratic polynomials can have at max no no zeros one zero so one zero was this case one zero right one zero was yeah one zero and it can have no zeros uh, sorry couple of zeros as well right but at no under no circumstances it will have three zeros and also if you notice the curve has one turn one turn and the lowest point is minima in this case minima in this case so whenever a is greater than zero you can say the curve opens upwards and hence it will have a minimum value it it doesn't have a maximum value because it is tending towards infinity and when a is negative my friends so it does have a maximum value isn't it can you see this is the maximum value which it can attain and the curve cannot go beyond that and uh, and and the in in this case also there is no zero but hence i can increase the value of 
C. And you can see now the curve has a maximum value as well as there are two zeros. So please uh, go through this session slowly and understand. And uh, I would recommend that you download this uh, software GeoGebra and try to write this equation and try to play with the values of A, B and C and see how the graph responds. This will give you a very clear idea of the behavior of the quadratic polynomial. So we learned what if A changes, if A value changes, then the curve, curve flips. If B value changes, the vertex traces another, another path, right? And if C value changes, the curve just shifts up and down, up and down. This is what we learned. Okay. So hope this session was useful. In the next session, we will be taking up some other type of curves.